Welcome to iLector Online. Here we begin a new series, the JE Advance 2022, and we're going to, of course, concentrate on the physics videos. And I must say, when I started reading the new, the new questions, they are definitely very challenging, and I'm always amazed as to the ingenuity of the people who come up with the questions. They're absolutely amazing questions. In addition to that, even if you don't want to take the JEE test, if you don't live in India and you don't have to take the test, it's not a bad idea to go through these questions because many of them will actually push your understanding to a new level. They always tend to add additional things that you don't normally see in typical textbooks and in many cases I've never encountered problems just like that before and I have to think to the next level before I can figure out how to solve them. So it is really a good set of problems for those people who really want to know and understand physics. So let's start with our first one. This is from paper one. Notice that uh, they do paper one, paper two. Paper one is the test in the morning and then they come back in the afternoon and they do paper two. So it's a whole day, very intense work and they do physics, uh, chemistry and math in paper one and then again in paper two. So it's like a three hour test in the morning, three hour test in the afternoon. After six hours of test taking, you're probably pretty tired and you only get about three or three and a half minutes or so per problem and it takes sometimes a minute and a half just to read the problem so you can imagine you must work very very quickly and it's virtually impossible to get through the test and get all the questions answered so keep that in mind that this is a very intense difficult test and it is a very good test to go through for practice to learn the physics so our first one deals with mechanics in particular stars density and escape velocity notice we have two spherical stars a and b having densities of density a and density b a and b have the same radius and their masses ma and mb are related by that mb is twice the mass of ma due to an interaction process star a loses some of its mass so that its radius is halved while its spherical shape is maintained and its density remains density A, so the density doesn't change. The entire mass loss by A is deposited as a thick spherical shell on B with the density of the shell being density A. And we're presuming that density B for the inner part still remains density B. They don't say that specifically, but you can assume that. If VA and VB are the escape velocities from A and B after the interaction process, the ratio VB VA is equal to the square root of 10N divided by the cube root of 15. What is the value of N? Now remember, you're not on any calculators. You virtually have no scratch paper to work on. There may be a little bit of space on the test. And um, okay, how do we go about doing this? Well, it's always a good idea, if you have room, to put down a schematic of what's happening. So we start out with star A and star B being the same radius, radius R. So here we have star A and star B. Then on the next picture, star A has lost a considerable amount of its mass, so that now our radius is only half of what it was before. So this is A after, we'll call it A final, A initial. B initial and then B, the star B has gained that additional mass and so it now has a spherical shell around. This is now B final and so this was its original radius and this is the final radius for B and of course we don't know yet what that is. All right, in order to solve this problem you have to remember the equation for the escape velocity and we know that the escape velocity of A, oh, let's see here, we have the ratio here, right? So the velocity of B is going to be equal to the square root of 2G mass of B, and that would be mass of B final, divided by the radius final. And of course, then we divide that by the escape velocity of A, which is equal to, and then we'll put the equal sign over here, the square root of 2G mass of A final divided by the radius of A final. Okay, so that's the ratio we're looking for. And right away you can see that we don't need to know G and we can cancel out the two as well. So it's simply a ratio of the square root of the mass over the radius for A, for B, divided by the mass over the radius for A after the event, after the mass has been transferred. All right, so first of all, uh, we need to realize how much mass is lost from A. 
If the radius went down to half, remember that the volume is proportional to the radius cube. And so then, if the radius goes to half, that would be the initial volume, the initial radius, the final volume then would be proportional to the initial radius divided by 2 cubed, which is equal to r cubed divided by 8. In other words, you can see that now we have only 1 8 the original volume. The final volume is down to 1 8 the original volume. And since the density doesn't change, that means the mass final, m final, for A is now equal to 1 8 m initial for A. So we've gone down to 1 8 the mass. So for the final mass, we now know that it's 1 8 the original mass. How to mass for B? Well, notice that the mass for B was equal to begin with 2 times the mass of A. But now we gained an additional 7 eighths mass of A. So now you can see that that would be 16 over 8 plus 7, which is 23 over 8 mass of A. So now we also know the final mass of B, which is what it started with, plus the additional mass it gained from A. So now we have the masses. What about the radius? Well, the radius final for A, uh, I guess this is B right there, so the radius final for A, radius final of A, is equal to one half the original radius. All right, so that's no, that was given. But what about the new radius for B, the final radius for B? All right, so there what we need to do is relate the volumes, right? The volumes. How much has the volume changed? So what we can say is that the volume uh, final over the volume initial is equal to 4 thirds pi radius final over, that's cubed of course, divided by 4 thirds pi radius initial cubed. Right away we realize that the radius of the volumes should now be known because the radius of the volume is proportional to the radius of the masses. Hmm, is that true? Hmm, hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, okay, we, got, we have to be careful here. Not quite the same as the radius of the masses. What we have to do here is that the final volume, and this is of course for B, right? This is for star B. So the final volume would be the original volume, which was the same as A, plus 7 eighths the volume. So in this case, it would be uh, volume of A plus 7 eighths volume of A. So that will now be the new volume of A. And the original volume for B was simply the same as the volume of A. So the volumes were the same since the radii were the same. And so here we can see that this ratio would be 8 eighths plus 7 eighths or 15 eighths. So we get 15 over 8 is equal to and of course this cancels out, the radius final cubed divided by the radius initial cubed. So, if we take the cube root of both sides, then we have the cube root of 15 divided by the cube root of 8, which is 2, is equal to the radius final over the radius initial, or we can now say that radius final is equal to the cube root of 15 divided by 2 times the radius initial. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Now we have what it takes to calculate this out. And of course, I'm beginning to run out of room here. So now we can say that VB over VA is equal to the mass of B. The mass of B is 23 over 8 mass of A. 23 over 8 mass of A divided by, and I guess I should use the big M like this, divided by the radius final of B. And the radius final of B is right here, which is equal to the cube root of 15 divided by 2 times the radius initial. And we divide that by, and of course I should put my equal sign here, the square root of, now for A, the mass of A is now 1 8. The mass of A divided by the radius of A now is 1 half the original radius. 
Okay, now we're almost there. Notice that mass A cancels out, radius initial cancels out, the 23 over 8, the 8 cancels out with this 8, and then we have the, let's see here, we have the 2 in the denominator, we have a 2 in the denominator, we have a 2 in the denominator, so that cancels out. So we're left with VB over VA is equal to, in the numerator, we have, well, we have the square root, in the numerator we have 23 divided by the cube root of 15. Okay, now we go and look at what we have over here. We have, this is supposed to be 10 times n divided by the cube root of 15. And here we have 23, so we can say that this is equal to the square root of 2.3 times 10 divided by the cube root of 15. And notice that I have everything I need, and n now is equal to 2.3. So we say that n is equal to 2.3, and they want you to carry it out to two decimal places. That's a new rule for, 20, uh, for 2022. And so therefore, we write that n is equal to 2.30 as the final answer in this problem. And notice this took a whole lot longer than three minutes, and that's about all you get. And that includes... <laughs> it took 11 minutes. Thank you. Of course, I take time to explain it, otherwise I could have gone a little bit faster. <laughs> but yeah, trying to do a problem like this in three or two, whatever the, the amount is, maybe you get as much as three and a half minutes. Uh, that would, you'd have to work really, really fast. But remember, again, they say find the ratio. Then you have to identify this ratio in terms of this. Then you look at mass of B final, radius of B final, mass of A final, radius of A final, and then you have to find out what those values are based upon first comparing the, the masses, the mass laws, then to find the volume comparison, then to find the radius comparison, and that is how it's done.